With the addition of the F-16C Block 50 in War Thunder, all eyes are fixed towards Japan and the Mitsubishi F-2. We've already had a taste of a Japanese F-16 with the F-16AJ, but the Mitsubishi F-2 is the desired price of the Japanese tech tree. However, the Mitsubishi F-2 has a very special quirk. It's the first fighter in the world with a production AESA radar. The JAPG-1 is the AESA radar mounted on the production and prototype variants of the Mitsubishi F-2. Recently, the Mitsubishi F-2 was also upgraded to the JAPG-2, an improved AESA radar. So what exactly is an AESA radar and why is there so much discussion surrounding this new type of radar? This video is going to cover what an AESA radar is in terms of the radar mechanics we have in-game currently. AESA radar stands for Active Electronically Scanned Array Radar. The most helpful way to explain what this means is to work our way backwards from its acronym. As stated, the last letter in the acronym is A, which stands for Array. Array radars aren't some newfangled tech in War Thunder. An array radar simply means that radar has multiple antennas arranged in a certain pattern. This exists in the F4J, F4S, FGR2, and FG1's ANAPG-59 radar. A newer form of the array radar is a planar array radar. From the name, it means the antenna array is arranged into the form of a flat plane. Examples of planar array radars are the ANAPG-66 on the F-16, N010 radar on the Ming-29, and the Thales RDY on the Mirage 2000-5F. And no, unlike what some War Thunder YouTubers might say, the N010M on the Yak-141 and MiG-29 SMT is not a passive electronically scanned array radar. Let's find out why. The next letters we'll read up on its acronym is E and S, which stand for Electronically Scanned. Electronically scanned means the radar doesn't use mechanical steering of the radar dish to move the radar beam. How does this work? Remember how in an array radar there are multiple antennas arranged in a line or a plane? When a transmit receive module passes a signal through all of them, the interference pattern cancels out waves in certain directions and directs a radar beam in a specific direction. The direction of the radar beam is entirely determined by the computer-controlled time delays on the antennas on the radar. For example, if the radar beam needs to be aimed to the right, time delays on the leftmost antennas would be applied. The N010M is a mechanically scanned slotted planar array radar. From this, we can tell that it is most certainly not a passive electronically scanned array radar like the N011 bars. The final letter of the acronym we'll take a look at is the letter A, which stands for active. This is opposed to an earlier variant of the electronically scanned array radar, the passive electronically scanned array radar. A PESA radar has one transmitter outputting signals onto multiple antennas. In an active electronically scanned array radar, each antenna has its own transmit receive module that allows it to independently control its own frequency, time delay, and so on. Active electronically scanned array radars in use in aircraft today include the ANAPG-81 on the F-22 Raptor, the ANAPG-80 on the F-16C or D Block 60 for the UAE, and the ANAPG-83 Scalable Agile Beam Radar to be fitted onto existing U.S. Air Force F-16C and D Block 50s in the future. Russia also made an AESA variant of the Zhuk radar on the MiG-29, the Zhuk AE, but that was only ever offered for export. Other AESA radars from other nations include the JAPG-1 on the Mitsubishi F-2 and the subsequent JAPG-2, Thales RBE-2 on the Dassault Rafale, the PSO-5 Mark V radar on the Gripen, and the Euro radar captor on the Euro Fighter. So, what are the advantages of using AESA radars compared to PESA radars and mechanical radars? The first most obvious advantage of the AESA radar is the removal of moving parts. 
by having the beam steered electronically by phase shifters, you remove the need for a moving radar dish to perform scanning. This means that you can scan near instantaneously dependent on how fast your beams are moving. However, the Euro radar captor still maintains a mechanical steering mechanism in conjunction with electronic beam steering in order to perform locks 90 degrees to the sides of the aircraft. Another advantage is the ability to individually change the frequency of each signal from each antenna, making RWR detection and ECM jamming almost useless. Since RWRs detect a range of frequencies, all the AESA radar has to do is to change frequency for each pulse that means near instantaneously at every time the radar releases a beam at each antenna and the RWR, granted if it were older RWR systems like the SPO-15 and analr 56 c it would fail to detect the AESA radar signal. Furthermore, the AESA can also switch into a receive-only mode, which can receive jamming and radar signals from external sources without sending radar signals itself, allowing it to detect targets without revealing its own position. In War Thunder, the significant advantage of an AESA and PSA radar is that it can track multiple targets. The Tor M1 in-game has a passive electronically scanned array radar, and as long as the second target is within the tracking beam of the Tor as it tracks the first target, it can also guide missiles towards the second target at the same time as the first target. This is because PESA only has a single transmit receive module that receives reflected signals. However, in AESA radars, this is taken to a different level. With each antenna independent of the other, it can send radar beams in multiple directions, allowing the AESA system to theoretically track more than two targets in the radar's entire sight picture. This allows the launch platform to guide as many missiles to as many targets as it could. Of course, tracking targets requires a certain amount of energy per radar beam to be reflected back to the receiver so the radar can only track so much targets at a certain distance. As the distance closes in, the energy received increases due to the inverse square law and thus more and more targets are allowed to be independently tracked by the AESA radar. As if that wasn't enough, AESA radars can also be fitted onto missiles. The AAM-4B is the world's first active radar missile with an AESA seeker, meaning that if launched, the missile will not ping radar warning systems once it activates its own radar. If fired from TWS mode, there could possibly be very minimal RWR return against its opponents. So now that we've talked about AESA radars, let's now talk about the Mitsubishi F2. The Mitsubishi F-2 is a multi-role fighter developed by Mitsubishi in cooperation with Lockheed Martin for the Japanese Air Self-Defense Forces. The origin of the Mitsubishi F-2 comes after the acquisition of the F-15Js from McDonnell Douglas in 1981. With the F-15J intended as a gradual replacement for the F-4EJ, this new fighter proposal was intended as a gradual replacement for the Mitsubishi F-1 in its multi-role capability. It wouldn't be until 1985 that an actual feasibility study would commence. The development of the F-2 was mired in politics. Japan intended to indigenously produce the fighter, but meddling from the United States guaranteed American participation in the program. Since the agreement made sure that General Dynamics provided F-16 Fighting Falcon technology, this greatly influenced the program in an agreement about a 40-60 manufacturing split between American and Japanese companies ensured that the FSX program would eventually resemble the F-16. The Mitsubishi F-2 is a single-engine multi-role fighter. It is powered by the General Electric F-110 GE-129 engine manufactured locally by Ishikawa G. Maharima Industries as the F-110 IHI-129. In effect, it has the same engine as the F-16C Block 50. The Mitsubishi F-2 ex is externally similar to the F-16C, 
However, it is larger in some places, owing to its F-16 Agile Falcon roots. The F-16 Agile Falcon was a proposed upgrade to the F-16 with four missile hardpoints per wing with a larger fuselage. When rejected as an upgrade, it was proposed as an alternative to the F-22. However, the Japanese adopted some of the features of the Agile Eagle and incorporated them onto the F-2 design. The F-2, however, kept the normal six underwing pylons on the F-2 as the main requirement was to be able to carry just a total of four ASM-2 missiles. The intention of this fighter was to be in the anti-shipping role as well as an air combat role. As a result, the Mitsubishi F-2 is painted exclusively in the iconic dark blue camouflage pattern that everyone enjoys. The radar of the Mitsubishi F-2 is the JAPG-1, the first AESA radar mounted on an operational aircraft, beating out the F-22's AN-APG-77 by about a few years. The Mitsubishi F-2 eventually received an upgraded radar, the JAPG-2, which also is AESA but with improved components and software integration. The F-2 uses Japanese electronics and has enhanced capabilities because of it. For example, the JAAQ forward-looking infrared system can track air and ground targets. It also gets a unique look on its tail thanks to the RWR bulges. I can't seem to find information on the F-2's chaff and flare dispensers, so for the sake of War Thunder, it is possible that it used the same ALR-47 like the F-16C Block 50 and in that case would have about 90 countermeasures. The armament of the F-2 is comparable to the F-16. The JM-61A1 is a Japanese licensed production of the 20mm M61A1, also with the 512 rounds. There were plans to give it a lighter JM61A2 AHS, but that went nowhere and it retained the M61A1 Vulcan. Missile armament include AIM-9 Sidewinders, AIM-7 Sparrows, AIM-120 AMRAMs, AAM-3 and AAM-5 IR missiles. The AAM-4 Active Radar Missile and the AAM-4B AESA Radar Equipped Active Radar Missile. Ground attack equipment include the ASM-1, ASM-2, ASM-3, JDAM bombs, and the GCS-1 infrared guided bomb. It uses Mark 82 500 pound bombs and the JM-117 bombs, but the Mitsubishi F-2 does not have unguided rockets. In War Thunder, the F-2 would be the very definition of a power leap, because from the F-16 AJ, Japan would go into what would be one of the best planes in the game. If War Thunder would implement its maneuver load control function that allows it to turn tighter by proper management of the leading edge and trailing edge flaps, it would be a very great dogfighter. As for ground ordnance, I don't see the ASM-2 and 3 being added for the game at this point since those are long-range anti-ship missiles and if we were to receive them, the JH-7A would have received the KD-88s and YG-63s if they really intended to go in that direction. So to summarize, the F-16AJ going to the F-2 would be like going to the F-15J from the F-4EJ without the EJ Kai. Or, you know, going to the T-2 from the F-4D Sabre. I think that War Thunder would leave the XF-2A to be a vent or such in the future and just have Japan wait for the F-15 update for their F-15J to tide them over until the F-2 is ready. There was also a later variant of the F-2 that was being offered, the Mitsubishi F-2 Super Kai. However, that went nowhere and from what I know, no mock-ups or prototypes have been built for the F-2 Super Kai. For the F-2 to be ready, aircraft like the FNA-18E and SU-30 should already be in-game. And knowing Gaijin, it'll be here in a year. I mean, it'll take a long time, yes. Mm. We've certainly not gone from the F-16A to F-16C in about half a year. Anyways, I digress. 
The Japanese tech tree situation is something I'd like to cover in my video after this, so stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching, and as always, this is the Dr. MD. Godspeed.